For more on this story, we can go across to James Vecina standing by at the Champs Elysees. James, what's the atmosphere like where you are? Well, look, Delano, things are slowly building up. We've still got plenty of time before the start of the ceremony, but the Champs Elysees have been blocked off. As you can see, we're in the middle of what is normally a very busy avenue. Once again, Paris has chosen to showcase some of its top landmarks for this opening ceremony. As for the Olympics, well, for the Paralympics, it's the first time that this ceremony is being taken place outside of a stadium. And while it's not taking place on the River Seine, as it did a couple of weeks ago, for this edition, it's taking place on the Champs Elysees, one of the most recognisable spots in the world. Whether you've been to Paris or not, you might recognise where we are. Of course, there's the Arc de Triomphe on one side and the Place de la Concorde behind us. Now, that is where the, uh, the ceremony will be centred around, that Place de la Concorde. That's the place uh, where Louis XVI and his wife, Marie Antoinette, were guillotines, of course, uh, quite a few times ago. But this is a talk of a different revolution uh, this time around. It's a revolution for the uh, Paralympics. Uh, who want to, of course, uh, take centre stage after the Olympians, and I'm hoping that that fever can keep up during the coming weeks. Now, of course, just like with this summer uh, with the Olympics, there comes a big challenge uh, for Paris 2024 on the Paralympic side. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you remember, Paris was slightly cooled down. Half of Paris was on holiday. Things were quite different. It was very relaxed in the city here. Uh, trains were working very well. And well, now, slowly, people are coming back for work. And there's a slight change of atmosphere, but also, very crucially, is that uh, when the Olympics took place, we had this certain political uh, hi uh, hiatus, if you like, at the moment, because, of course, it's now been two months since, uh, since uh, the uh, Assembly, the National Assembly here in France, has decided uh, to dissolve and France needs a new prime minister. Well, that was left aside because the politicians went on holiday. Well, now the politicians are back and we'll see whether that manages to take an impact over the, uh, the Paralympics coverage and just in the scene in general, because, of course, uh, that, that hiatus will not be continued. Uh, as it's known, the rentrée, uh, as it's known in Paris, in France, uh, at the end of summer and the beginning of September is when everything kicks back into action. So let's hope that we can see plenty of sports uh, happening here, which we will do, but the coverage will be, and that it won't be, of course, impacted by any of that. There's already talks uh, of, uh, of demonstrations uh, facing some of the uh, political decisions that have been taken recently, but more about the sports. Uh, the sports is going to be taking place in the same locations, pretty much as the Olympics did. So... On, on, that means uh, taking place outside of the Eiffel Tower, over in Bercy, uh, also, and plenty of the big landmarks that Paris is showcasing throughout. That's the Chateau de Versailles as well, where the equestrian uh, took place, and the Paris side is taking place over there as well. So the hope is that they're going to be able to attract just as many people to these games. It's not easy, of course. It's been a two-week uh, two, uh, two separation uh, between those two there, and there are still plenty of tickets up for sale, but perhaps... What's been great is about the Olympics, the fever that was brought around them. Well, they're hoping that we, they can get the same things around the Olympics. This is not the, the story about trying to showcase uh, Paralympians as being special. Of course, there's a certain speciality about them, but it's about trying to bring everything into the norm. And also for Paris and for France, it's a, it's a, it's, there's a bit of hope that maybe things can change uh, for uh, people with disabilities. Think of the Paris Metro quite simply. Very difficult to get around if you're in a wheelchair. Wheelchair being only one form, of course, of disability uh, at that. But it's a hope, of course, that these will think brings changes to what is a very, very old city. It's all just part of it. So it's not just about the sport. There's everything around it. And it's a big moment uh, for Paralympians uh, and for people with disabilities to get the attention that they deserve and that they don't normally get during uh, the rest of the year and hoping that they can get changes through these Paralympics. As part two of Paris 2024 kicks off tonight. James, thank you very much for that. James Vecina standing by at uh, the uh, Champs-Élysées there.